Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And this is where we share with you all about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Thank you so much for being here. We see that you all are really busy in the chat feed already, and we're so excited. And we know you're excited about our guests today too. But first, just a little bit of housekeeping for you. So um, if you have a question for our guests, you can put that in the comments. We just ask that you preface it with three or four question marks and then end with three or four question marks. And that will just help the question to pop out at my husband, Tom, as he's moderating the chat feed. Also, we have moderators helping us today. So I believe so far, Randy and Jesse are here in the chat and they can answer some of your <clears throat> questions as well. And they also do what we call troll hunting. So if anybody comes on and, you know, tries to confuse things in the comment section, they'll take care of that for us as well. And so um, we expect to be on about an hour, but if you have a lot of questions, our guests have said that they would be willing to stick around until everyone's questions are answered. So we're very excited today that uh, we have our friend Al Schmidt and our friend Esther uh, Loveridge with us. And they are going to share all about their whole food plant-based lifestyle, why they chose to go whole food plant-based later in life, and uh, what program they did, and the changes that it has made in their life. <clears throat> and I want to say, they are not a married couple. They are friends, and they each have their own spouses. <laughs> So with no further ado, please welcome Al and Esther. Hi, you guys. Say hi. So hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here. I know after you two appeared together on Chef AJ's program a while back, some people got confused and thought that you two were married to each other. And so I just wanted to clarify that you're not. You no, we're not. You can. We don't fight anywhere near enough to be married. <laughs> I, I think you two kind of sound like brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah she's the sure. little sister I never wanted. Right. Oh, Al. <laughs> and he's the big brother that never listens to me. <laughs> That's, That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah That's it's good. a brother-sister relationship for yeah. sure. Well, I do want to tell everyone that um, that we are all friends in the real world. Yeah. Uh, we, we live in the same area and um, pre-pandemic, we used to get together all the time and we're looking forward to getting together with you all more in the future. Um, but I just, you guys have such amazing stories and you adopted this lifestyle a little bit later in life. Um, and I just think that it's truly inspiring for everyone um, to learn about your stories. And I think mm -hmm. You know, we'll do the Reader's Digest version, maybe. Um, have each of you tell your stories, why you adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle, um, which, you know, there's some variation in different doctors that you can follow. So which program was successful for you and what were the results? And of course, I think I'm a little old fashioned. I think we should let ladies go first. Absolutely. So, so Esther... Um, um, tell us about your story. Well, okay. Yeah, you say we we're a little bit old. I was like a whole lot old. I, I didn't was, say old. I said older. Oh, older. Well, <laughs> I, say I was old, well, old in, um, in terms of my health, but not in terms of my vitality of life. That's because right. And I, my other husband, <laughs> my real husband, I should say not my other, my real husband, <laughs> he and I love to travel, and we've been all over the world together. We found really cheap ways to travel, and so uh, my crisis came when my knees got so bad that I wondered if I could even make it to the gate at the airport in Ireland. We've been all over Ireland. Of course, I was tired after several weeks of traipsing around there, but when it, I mean, my feet even hurt, so where each step I took, I thought, can I even make it to the gate? And um, so that was really my crisis. I call it my road to Damascus, where I was literally brought to my knees 
yeah. and became aware that it was a, now a problem. Before, I mean, I had diverticulitis, I had GERD, I had sleep apnea, I had, of course, my weight, as you can see in the picture, uh, had gotten up to 282 and now down to 127. So it's been a, a big change. But at that point, that was when I really had to do something about it. So the short version is that I did go to the doctor after we got home, after I had written my obituary, because Ben said, if you die, he says, I won't be able to write one for you. So I got up in the middle of the night, wrote my obituary. And then two weeks later, my whole life changed. It was kind of like I became aware of, you know, what my life had been and what I wanted it to become. And the doctor that I saw then, he said, well, there's three options. You can either um, have knee injections, which I didn't think that sounded very good. Or he said, you can continue giving me pain medication because here in China, if you're showing the picture, uh, that was actually from 2011. But in 2000, let's see when I started, 18? 16. 16. What? We both started in 16. 2016. Okay. I did not check AJ's. I said the wrong date. Anyway, no. yeah, 16, yeah, five and a half years ago, we were going back to China. Uh, in the fall. And so I didn't know what to do prior to that time. But anyway, so it was either knee injections or continue taking uh, the pain medication. Or he said, I can refer you to orthopedics for a possible knee replacement. He said, you're almost blown on bone. And I didn't like any of those choices. And, you know, we all have choices in life, right? And uh, then he dropped the bomb on me and said, but before I could refer you to orthopedics, you'd have to lose 70 pounds first. So that was my, my real crisis, my real moment of not knowing what to do. There's no way I was going to lose 70 pounds and have knee surgery before September. But my friend was divinely inspired to give me Dr. John McDougall's book, The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss. And I had no information about veganism or vegetarianism and to read a diet that included no animals, no dairy, and no oil. It just was so different from all of the other diets that I tried throughout 50 years of dieting. Uh, I thought, I'm going to give it a try. And if it succeeds, or if it works, then I'm going to give him all the credit. And that's my story in a nutshell. That's wow. fantastic. And we showed some of the pictures, um, too, the before, your before and after pictures. So you were like a size 26 right? when you started and now you're a, a size six or four? Six. Size six. Yeah. And you've also become an author. Oh, yes. Yes. So yeah. I want to show your book too. Oh. So you guys, Esther has this wonderful book, Donuts to Potatoes. And that's because Ben and her met through his donut shop. And um, they don't eat donuts anymore, but they do eat a lot of potatoes. And so this book is very inspiring. Uh, Esther is a very gifted writer and she has just a lot of, she takes inspiration from everyday things. And so this is pretty much like, kind of like a, a diary for you for an entire year, everyday writing, inspirational um, post on your Facebook page, and then you turn these into a book. And so everybody can enjoy this reading the pages one day at a time and just get thoroughly inspired. Plus, there are pictures in here, um, your, some of your before and after pictures as well. And not only did you lose weight, but Ben also, your husband adopted this lifestyle and he lost weight as yeah. well. Yeah, see, he had been 320 at his all time high. Um, and he was down to about 220, 230. Uh, when he finally, after about a nine month uh, long time, I thought waiting to join, he went down to 160. And his waist at one time, I like to brag, was 52 inches and now it's 32. Uh, but Ben at first said, oh, I, said, Look, he's, I could never eat like you. And I said, it's okay, because he was the cook anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just was the one who had changed how I ate. So we did that. And then 
he, he says that he started getting all the propaganda through watching you and Jeff AJ and overhearing other doctors talk on podcasts that, that kind of started making sense to him. And uh, But he wanted to wait until all the meat was out of the freezer. And then he wanted to wait until the cheese was out of the house. And then the eggs were out of the house and the oil was out. And then he finally decided he wouldn't buy anymore. And so it was probably about nine months later that he joined me and he just lost weight fast. And um, he didn't have as many so-called diseases I had. Although today when we were coming out here, he said, you know, I don't have any more headaches. And he didn't have a sleep apnea anymore. And he used to have a pain in his knee from uh, when he played football in high school and he doesn't have any pain there anymore. And he used to think he had to take Tylenol PM to go to sleep at night. He doesn't do that anymore. So he probably maybe would have had, of course he did have, um, uh, what do you call it when you get infected easily? Cellulitis. He had that several times when we were traveling. And he did have kidney stones and he did have a ruptured appendix. But you, you know, you tend to forget all those things when you're, when you're just focusing on You on used weight. to think you were healthy. Well, yeah, I wasn't fat. I mean, I was fat. I was, I was healthy, but I, what am I trying to say? I was, you thought you were I, healthy. Yeah, I did. I know. Yeah, because, you know, the statins took care of the high blood pressure or whatever. And, yeah. and I had sleep apnea. I mean, I had, uh, uh, what did I take, Ambien for sleep. And I had lithium for mood disorder. And I had, uh, <laughs> the list goes on and on. But exactly. the point is, um, thyroid issues, and now all the medicine is gone. You know, so I'm home free. So I keep. And it, well, maybe I'll just. And it helped your eyesight. Oh yeah, my eyesight. I don't have to wear glasses anymore. And so you know, it just keeps getting better and better. But and, it, and it's and it's all about the food. And yeah. do you yes. want to show yes. us your teacher? <laughs> it's the food. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Can you yes. see it to me? We can see it. It's the oh, food. Okay. Okay. And it is, it's, sim it's, it's a matter of what's on the end of your fork. That's right. And it's just, it's absolutely remarkable. You flash your I know. <laughs> <laughs> You never know. You never know. Never so know. somebody never wanted know. to know how we all met. So I actually, I met Al first. So Al and I went to um, a local vegan restaurant for a class. It was a meetup. And he had never been there before. And he came and sat by me and he asked if I could recommend anything on the menu that was oil free. And I said, yes, I'm oil free as well. So I helped him choose something. And, um, and then he had a, a good time at that. And he said, you are my new best friend. He, he said, I'm trying to yeah. make a lot of new friends be, since did, I've adopted did this dump, lifestyle. Did, did Al dump you for Esther then? Is that what happened? No, he didn't know Esther yet. Oh, <laughs> he didn't know Esther oh, yet. No, I didn't mean it. No, but let me tell my side of that story. Because anytime <laughs> I go to a meeting, I always have to sit next to the cute girls. You know, that's <laughs> just what I do. So I sat next to her and I told her, I gave her the really small thumbnail Reader's Digest uh -huh. version of my story. And she seemed mm -hmm. impressed. And she says, oh, would you tell that to my mother? And I said, is your mother cute? Oh. <laughs> and so, but what she did is she introduced me to all, to a whole world of plant-based people. And that is so, was so important in my journey, in my transition. And to this day, I still tell people, not a pandemic, sorry, but I tell them the most important thing in the journey is to surround yourself with these people because the plant-based people are positive. Mm -hmm. And the carnivores, well, I'm like, I got an ache under my arm and I got this taken out. And you don't want to listen to that all day. But when we sit around and talk, we exchange recipes. Oh, have you seen Tammy's latest program? Or have you seen this? Or have you seen that? And it's positive. It's, a, it's night and day. I'm sorry, I interrupted. I tend to do that. No, no, that's perfect. And you're right, Al, that it's extremely important that you have a community to, um, to help you stay on the right path. And just to have people who are like-minded, it just makes it so much easier. And then um, a, a Sherry Patterson, who belonged to Esther's Facebook group, sent me a message and she said, Tammy, don't you live in Roseville, California? There's a lady whose Facebook group 
I'm in and she's having a meetup at the Whole Foods in Roseville. You should go. And so I said, well, is it open to anybody? And she said, it is. Um, you, anybody can go. Anybody who wants to learn about being plant-based or is plant-based. And so I told Al about it. And so I went and Al came and we had to introduce ourselves to Esther because she had no idea who we were. And the two of you became fast friends. Now, and to this day, she still insists that I crashed her party. And, 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 and Tammy and Tom Tammy, too. Yeah, yes, they did. <laughs> she has rules and you've got to pay attention to her rules. <laughs> but I'm glad you did. I'm yeah, glad so you did because I was... I had no idea what you had going on in your life at that time. Although I will say, as I think back, my friend used to talk about that Meg notebook, and I just, oh. but I didn't personally know about you yet. But right. We came and we met, and as we say, the rest is. The rest is history. Yeah, we've all been friends. Well, Al, I would like you to give us the Reader's Digest oh, version. Uh, yeah, I'll try, but it's uh, hard. All right, well, it's eighty years old. They told me I had end stage coronary artery disease. The key there is the end part. And, but it didn't just happen overnight. Oh no, oh no. When I was 48, I had five vessel cabbage or whatever they call it. Oh. Uh, uh, open, uh, at 48? At 48 years old. Yeah, oh, this, this has been on for a long time. I took the pledge, no meat and low fat. Well, when I say no meat, it was no red meat, but I, my father had died at 59. So when I turned 60, that was a big deal. And Al, um, did he have heart disease? Pardon? Did your, did your father have heart disease? Oh, yes. He died of his, uh, I think his second or third heart attack. Back then, they didn't have any uh, of a way of treating him. And, you know, they say it runs in the family, but what, what you pointed out or somebody pointed out, what runs in the family is the menu. The recipes. The recipes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't a meal unless it had meat. That's what my dad did. So in 2005, I had another heart attack while bicycling. So they put a stent in, and this was quite a few years after uh, I had the bypass surgery. And I, it was just, I was healed overnight. I couldn't believe it. And I always thought about that. They're not doing us favors when they do that. Because if I didn't have that trauma in my life, would I have changed my mm -hmm. diet? Because I fully believe that at the time, people, not at the time, people are still eating 45 to 50% fat. I cut it back to 25 and I think that got me to 80. I'm not, you know, I have no way of knowing. To 80 years of age. 80 years of age. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why we're such good friends. She, <laughs> she helps me along with my talking. <laughs> <He's doing that. laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So in 2013, I had another stint put in. I was having chest pains, no relief at all. In 2014, they put me on two drugs, which you don't know about, the MDOR and Renexa. And they opened up my blood vessel, so I was falling down. I wasn't even drinking. I was walking around. I could hardly walk. And to put another stint in again, no help. So now I am becoming the cardiac cripple. This is when they talk about, uh, you know, having end-stage coronary artery. I couldn't do anything. I literally, my life had narrowed down to watching TV, which I don't like. And we were sitting in front of the computer. I couldn't take the trash out. You've been, well, you're at my house. <laughs> Here we are. That's where we are, Al. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, Sometimes and I, it gets all real confusing. Yeah, and I need to practice walking up your steps. <laughs> yes, you do. So, so all of it, we got to picture you again. All oh, right. Yeah. Does that mean I'm talking too much? No, you're doing great. All right. So. Um, where was I? Oh, and here's, I a, here's a before and after of you, Al. Yeah. yeah, that was I was in Paris then. I was unhappy because um, I was having chest pains. In Paris, you can walk into a drugstore and buy uh, pills that you pop. And I did on that trip because I had nothing but chest pains. It was a horrible trip. So, and that's when I met, actually, that's the uh, picture of me when I uh, was talking to Tammy. 
Oh, yeah, and I right. took that anyway, picture of you. That was the I first time tendency, we met. I have a tendency to go on. <laughs> okay, but you put a you put a chairlift in your home. Oh yeah, I had to put chairlifts in my house because I couldn't move. Uh, I mean, couldn't climb stairs, and I live in a three. Well, you you can't go any place if it's a pry level. It's like you try to keep it level. There's no way that I can go any place in this house without stairs. I was so depressed. I mean, I was lower than snake poo in a wheel <laughs> rut. I mean, I was depressed. So, um, so they send me. So after the last stint, they send, and I could. Oh, I had to cancel trips. I was housebound. I was terrified to go in a big silver bird on an airline because I thought, what if I, you know, what if I have a an episode, a heart attack? You're always when you have coronary artery disease. You're always waiting for the big one. Yeah, see, that's what. That's why I didn't think I was sick. Yeah, that's well, see, you're that. you're you. It's a constant when you have coronary mm -hmm. artery disease. It's a constant mm -hmm. reminder. I don't know how it is for uh, strokes, but I know for heart disease, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they tell you when you first go have your first heart attack, you know, you're going to die of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to die. Well, you could slip and fall. But. Mm -hmm. So. Um, where were we? You were so down. your cardiologist sent you to a, a class yeah, at well, Kaiser. Kaiser gives you that option. Yeah, I could go to the class or not. Well, of course I'm going to go. So Dottie takes me to class and I walk like an old man. I have to shuffle into class. I, I can't walk from here to the front door of my house without uh, crippling chest pain. It is not a fun thing. So I, I go there. <laughs> And the first half of it, it's two parts. The first half is they, they want you to do exercise, not in the class, but they oh. talk about, now we want you guys to exercise, to get out and do this and do that. And I'm thinking, exercise? I just want the darn thing to keep running. Never, I don't want it to get faster. So then they have the second half is diet. So I'm thinking, okay, now I changed my diet in 1984. That's something I can do. Yeah. I have control of that. So, all right, so this lady, fat lady waltzes out and says, I'm going to tell you about whole food plant-based. And I thought, bury me now. I mean, if, if this is what it brings, she says, but I'm not on it. And I thought, oh, okay. So I, I didn't give Tom the, um, halfway through that, her video. She says, it's very, very wonderful, but I'm not on it. Well, why, if it's so good, why aren't you on it? Never mind. Halfway through it, they show a picture of an angiogram right from Dr. Eshelstan's book. In that angiogram, uh, there is an occlusion and 32 months later, not 36, 32 months later, that occlusion has totally gone away and corollary arteries have grown around to support the heart. And that gave me a lot of support. I thought, okay, because I, I really, you know, they told me there's nothing we can do. They, the last time they gave me an angiogram, they said, your blood vessels are occluded. There's nothing we can do. We already put the stents in, and they didn't help. We put the stents in. So the, the, the little tiny arteries in your heart and your body and everywhere, they're just they're not working, and we can't do anything. So they give me, they don't give me, they recommend three books. The first is Eshelstyn's book, How to prevent and reverse heart disease. And in it, he talks about 20 people that he took, six of which couldn't eat the diet and they passed away almost instantly. The other 18 hung around for at least 20 years and they were and they were crippled like I was. I mean, that, that, I, that related to that. They, half of them couldn't hardly walk to his office they had all sorts of coronary artery disease. So I thought, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And the next book they recommended was uh, Dr. Michael Greger's book, How Not to Die, which I thought was a wonderful title. Uh, unrealistic, but a good title. So in the very first page of that book is a, a story about why he got into medicine. And the reason he got into medicine was because his grandmother was sent home from the hospital with coronary artery disease, just like me, and she couldn't walk. And they said, there's nothing we can do for you. She got herself somehow, I don't know where it was, but she got herself to California and went to Pritikin Institute and they put him on basically our diet. 
And in three weeks, she was walking 10 miles and she lived until she was 96, bless her heart. And the last book they recommended was uh, Pete Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, where Chow and Lai was dying of cancer. And so he had uh, Pete Colin run a study of everybody in China. They had 6,000 assistants helping him run the study. So in four, three, four weeks, four weeks, I, I got on the, just like, that's the reason you and I hit it up. I got on this, uh, I decided I'm gonna go on the diet and anything worth doing is worth doing to wretched excess. So I am gonna stay on this diet because I think, it, I hope it's gonna save my life. Well, it did. So I, uh, I got on the diet and in four weeks, I'm not as good as his grandmother because <laughs> I, I didn't have any help. I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know any cookbooks and Dottie wasn't any help, she didn't know either. But in three weeks, I could uh, walk a mile. I went up to Tahoe. I could walk a mile uh, easy on the beach. I could go upstairs. I could do just everything. I have it on my cards here because I don't have any sort of a memory. Uh, I'm sorry. I will quit saying you are right. My memory is getting better. My memory is getting better, yes. <laughs> and you're getting better looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad. So I can do all the activities I used to do. Now I can climb stairs. I can walk any distance. In fact, uh, last summer I went to Utah with um, some geologists and I hiked five miles to a, a mine and back. And we started 10,300 feet. I, I hiked to 11,000 feet and then I walked back. My cholesterol went immediately it went from 250 to 150 and now it's down to 118 my weight went from 180 to uh it went right away it went to 150 now it's down to 137 my kid now here's what something would have taken me out my kidneys were at 40 percent and i kaiser had sent me to a, a class and they said well there's nothing we can do for you you just uh, don't get because we're almost we're due to keep, keep it up and we're going to put you up, don't keep it up rather we're going <laughs> to keep you on don't give me that we're going to keep it on um on dialysis but they came back to normal uh and our friend maureen told me that i she was telling me how most people lose seven percent a year or something so Okay, I don't get ugly bruises. My PSA, this isn't interesting to you, of course, went from 7 to 3.8. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I really cared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. And the number of daily pills went from 20 to 8. Wow. My increase in mental acuity. Now, they asked me, how do I know my mental acuity? Because Dottie, my wife says, I always always thought I was an ass. Now she thinks I'm a smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> and no more ambulance rides, which I used to do three and a half wow. times a year. One, I was in, I think it was 14 or something. I went six times the first six months. It was terrible. I have much more energy, you can tell. Yeah. And I don't, this is something that I have a hard time believing. I'm 86 now. And I don't have aches and pains. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It is. It, I mean, I don't know how to describe that. I just did. And uh, the big one is, and I mentioned this earlier, is that I have peace of mind mm -hmm. in that I'm not waiting for the big one to hit. A couple times, well, if, before this in my 70s, I had, I still have a little bit of GERD if I eat too much for dinner, which is hard because I love what we eat. Uh, if I eat too much dinner, I'll have uh, uh, heartburn, but I know that it's heartburn. I don't worry that it's, oh, uh, it's the big one. Right. So and Al, that's and as Al, short as you, I can get it. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to say you took the stair lift out of your house because you can do the, you can climb up and down the stairs now. You yes. ride your bicycle. You can walk miles at a yes. time. I mean, you, you are extremely physical now after having gone whole food plant-based. Well, I, I really was before when I was younger. Right. 
This, the last, I, I round up, I call it six years. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not a kindergartner. The last six years of my life have been the best six years in the last 20. I mean, it, yes. it's just incredible. Yeah. So we have a question. Um, our viewer, John Warren, wants to know, are either of you on any medications now that you want to share? That you oh, want to yeah. share? She's not, but I, yeah. You got to understand, I didn't go on this until I was 80 and I had all sorts of terrible things that went bad. It actually, uh, this di lifestyle is a better word for it, will stop a lot of things. And in just in a few cases, it will reverse them. I, I don't think they, they have done any studies yet about reversing kidney disease, but it did with me. And it reverses somewhat heart disease. I mean, I had uh, occlusions that most humans, most normal people uh, have three uh, arteries that feed their heart. I only have one, the other two occluded up back from my uh, bypass surgery. So I only have one. So I'll never have the uh, stamina and things that uh, somebody else would have. This is a good I thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there is that. <laughs> you are sounding like my wife a lot. <laughs> so it, it, it um, so I still have to take pill. I still have a bit of GERD, and I do periodically take things for that. Uh, I'm going to True North uh, next uh, uh, month because my blood pressure is higher than it should be. My theory is that my veins were so screwed up and so clogged that you never get them. You know, they, yeah. the stuff goes away, but, you know, it, it, I'm, it isn't a fountain of youth, but it certainly is the garden of health. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, I've heard Dr. Esselstyn speak, and he wrote the How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And, um, and he says, you know, that diet alone may not be enough for everyone, that sometimes they do need to do some pharmaceuticals in addition to the lifestyle changes. Yeah. And then yeah. I heard another doctor talking about how for there's a tipping point. So for some of us, if we have gone, you know, too far without making the changes that there may be some things that are not reversible. For instance, my father is a type two uh, insulin dependent diabetic. We can't reverse his now because his pancreas no longer um, right. makes right. insulin. So that was that's a tipping point. But what we can do is change his diet so that he can take less insulin. And the less insulin you have to inject, you know, the better it is for your overall health. So, so there can be tipping points. So I, I always do like to make sure that um, people understand that, you know, it depends on the individual where you're at. Everything may not be reversible. Like it, I have high. No, no, I, I guess you have to stress that. But let me yes. say that uh, as Dr. Uh, McDougal says, every time it's tried, it works. I have yet to meet, it. now this is anecdotal, and I have, you have to understand that. I also have a scientific background. I was cho chosen to train the first monkey that went into space. And because of my background, of course, that was I mean, a million years ago. But nevertheless, the principle still apply. But I have yet to meet anybody that is not on this lifestyle that has not increased their energy level. You know, and not, I admit it, that's uh, subjective and it's not really quantifiable, but everybody feels good. It's one of the reasons that very few people on this lifestyle ever get off it, mm -hmm. because why should they? I, I don't want to feel bad. No. Well, and as quickly as you can, as you start to feel well and get better, that's also how quickly you can undo your progress if you go back to eating the way that you used to eat. Well, that's, I was terrified. That's one reason the first year on this diet, I was terrified if I slipped 
if I ate something that I shouldn't eat, I would immediately have death pain mm-hmm. and be unable to walk. Oh, I was yeah. terrified of that. Because well, of the body, anxiety. Our bodies do talk to us. Yes, we have yes. to listen. They do. Now, so for instance, I'm hypothyroid. I was actually diagnosed about a year after I adopted this lifestyle. <clears throat> and I've never, you know, I had to go on levothyroxine and I've never been able to go off of it. But I know that a lot of people have, after they've adopted a plant-based lifestyle, they have been able to go off of their um, medication. And that's an individual thing that you have to work with right. your own physician and people go off of it and then see, you know, if, if they can um, stay off of it. Um, but, you know, I, have- I, have, I take a very small um, dose of it and, and I'm you know, and I do great with it. So I just like to let people know it's, it's not a, you know, it doesn't always take care of everything. Um, Yeah. I had the same issues. I went, I thought I could, because Esther got off and I know she can do it. I should be able to do it, but I couldn't. We had different mothers. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) My sister from a different mother. Yeah. Uh, But I, I cut mine more than cut it in half, but I couldn't get, I took, tried to get off of it and, and we did the blood test with the doctor and it wouldn't do it, but I kind of yeah. way back. That's one. So of let the, me uh, ask you, let me guys, ask you guys um, this. What do you think your life would look like right now if you hadn't adopted a whole food plant-based SOS free lifestyle? What do you think your life would look like right now? Who are you talking to? Both of you. Yeah. I'd be dead. There was you no doubt. My, oh, there was no doubt in my mind that I'm the <clears throat> these five years, five and a half, six, whatever, they are a gift from God. And I I mean, I do the feeding, but nevertheless, he allowed me to see a path to it. And so I very seriously take the fact that that I owe I want to pay it back to for, for all the things that I've done. I, I've, I've said on my, if you go to my website and you've got a question, you will get an answer from me. Now, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one even on your show, but <laughs> I do have experience. I'm 86 years old and I have a lot of life experience. I've learned a lot of things and I know a lot of tricks about how to stay on the diet. Uh, one of them, which I'm going to put a pump right now is to buy this book. It's a funny little book by Scott Adams, who is the author of the Dilbert comic, but he talks about making a decision in your life. You don't just try to go on the diet. You try, you die. You don't just work on it. You don't hope you're going to go on it. You just make a decision and then you don't look back. That's one. Can you, the- Al, can you hold the book up again? Hold the book up so people can see it. Certainly. It's uh, everything. Let's see. What is, I don't know. How, how to fail at almost everything and still win big. And he talks about setting up systems instead of goals. And for instance, one of my systems, I, I, the reason this book spoke to me, it's like I'm meeting you after I read the book. I didn't know why I was so successful. I'd be doing this. I mean, I knew the medicine made me success, not the medicine, the food, but why did I not want to go off the diet? Why did I stay on? And one of the things that I told Dottie, I said, I don't care what it tastes like, I will eat the healthiest choice. Mm -hmm. So if you give me two foods and I don't care if it tastes like cardboard, if that's healthy, I'll eat it. If it's and of course the corollary of that is if you give me two choices of yak fat and uh, axle grease, I'm not going to eat either one of them. So um, you set up systems in your life and you achieve the things you want. Now, they're not, you know, eating the right food really isn't a big deal. And yet I meet people every day that can't quit or they can't stay on the diet, but I think they can. They just have to decide. Sorry, I got off on the rant there. That's okay. I sometimes say it's like when we get married, we don't say I'll try. When the, uh, yes. when the officiating person says, will you do this? And will you do this? And will you do this? And then we stand there and with 
with stardust in our eyes, we'd say, I do. Mm -hmm. We don't say, I'll try. You don't also just be married on the weekdays. No, no, no. That's true. You have to follow the diet seven days a week. And the thing is, if you try it, not try it, they're again saying that, but if you make a commitment to do it for 30 days and then you see the results, that's the best motivator because sometimes people tell me I'm inspirational or that I'm helping them, but I firmly believe that motivation has to come from within. Yeah. And when we have our own personal experience, that's the best motivator, not listening to some speaker. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. that's their life and that's what's worked for them, but we don't believe it until we can experience it. That's right. And, you know, some people, when you tell them how you eat, they'll say, oh, that sounds so restrictive. I could never eat like that. Right. Do you find this lifestyle to be restrictive? Well, only in restaurants. It's inconvenient. I mean, let's be honest about it. it you can go and eat anywhere and eat anything if you don't care what you put in your face. I mean, wow. and it's un unhealthy half the stuff they feed you. Uh, you know, it's in a slot machine or uh, not a slot machine, uh, uh, canteen, or canteen or something. But it's not healthy food. It yeah. wasn't this. I don't know what it's designed for. It's designed to make money. Yeah, there you go. But. So let me ask you this. What about how did it affect your social life and how did it affect your um, ability to travel? Well, it didn't stop Ben and I from traveling <clears throat> at all because we, we love to travel. And then the thing that was so great for me was that when my knees quit hurting and right away, I noticed inches just coming off of my knee and, and, and the toxic just leaving my body so I could walk again. And um, so we just continued to travel and you just make decisions. And the good part for me was that before we kind of relied on cruises because your life is taken care of for you. You got your three meals a day and your snacks and, and a little bit of time in port and then back in your safe place again. But once I got to where I could walk, then we wanted to take what I call real trips where we'd be on land and get to meet people and be in their homes and be able to be out all day walking and not get tired and stay in these wonderful hotels. So I really did like that. And all we did was just tell our tour guide that we were vegan because they could understand that word and tell the airlines. And we actually got better food on the airlines than people yeah. eating the standard diet. And they'd look at our food and say, well, how'd you get that? They'd be jealous of what we were eating, you know? Yeah. And then on the ship, you know, the ship is easy when they're doing that because they always had oatmeal and, and fruit for breakfast, a big salad bar for lunch. And then they, we traveled on the Holland America lines and they had uh, even a vegan and a vegetarian and a gluten-free menu that you could choose from the night before. And then that next night they would bring what you special ordered. And so that worked out really well. The hardest part was in India because they also put a lot of ghee in mm -hmm. some of their food. But our guide was real good. And he'd take us down the line, say, okay, you can eat this and this and this. We don't eat that, don't eat that, and so forth. So that, that worked out really well. But in terms of uh, family, it's harder because you stick out like a sore thumb because you've chosen a different mm -hmm. path. And I had a brother say, well, Esther has a new religion. And so it's almost like that because the things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. You know, you're kind of choosing but the good part is you believe that you're worth it and you have a beautiful body and your body wants to be well and why would you want to do anything to slow it down or to hinder it you know when when you get that sense of self-esteem back and you don't have to be like the crowd to be proud of yourself and you can be happy that you're loving yourself enough to make some really good choices oh absolutely <laughs> And uh, someone wants to know, Esther, how many cruises have you been on? Donna wants to know. Donna uh, Baker. Oh, uh, I think Ben said we've been to 80 countries. But some of those countries, you know, you're one a day things, you know, but we have been all over. But how many cruises? I, I haven't counted. Probably 15. Mm -hmm. Some of them in 52 days. And we've had three canceled already this year. In fact, last year in 2020, we were scheduled to go on a 50-day cruise on March 14th. That's right when COVID hit. 
Yeah. And uh, but you know what? I didn't even care because at that same time my book came out. So yeah. why would I want to be out on the sea somewhere when I could be talking to my people at home? Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So the travel is fun. We do enjoy meeting people. We do enjoy it. But you know what? All you have to do is just walk to a poor part of town and you can pretend you're somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It's true. That's true. So, um, so how do you handle the, like, the holiday get-togethers? with family who still eat the standard American diet? Well, what I did at first, I still did the traditional Thanksgiving my first year because Ben was still eating the regular food. And I just took out my potatoes before I added the maple syrup or the marshmallows or whatever. I took out my salad before I added the dressing. And I took out my potatoes before I added the butter or milk, whatever. And then as time went on, we just would kind of introduce both kinds of foods. And it, it just got to the point where I didn't want that food in the house and I became kind of a purist. And so what we do now is we take the family out and we have, in fact, the good birthday was in, in December and we took them to the Loving Hut. And that time they only had one choice, which was big in food. But other times we've taken them to uh, not buy racial restaurants, but buy, what would you call it, binary restaurants where they serve both. And then mm. our family were shoving it down their throat. They had a choice. They could choose what they wanted and what we wanted. So I'm just through cooking at home. Besides, I eat so simply that it wouldn't be like coming to your house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know how to cook beautifully and really special, special. But me, I'm just kind of simple and plain. And, that, and we eat simply all the time. Tom and I do. Every day, we just eat simple. I just pull out the, you know, the more time intensive things if we're having company because we love the simple food we're very happy with it and i don't want to spend all my time in the kitchen there's too many other fun things that we can be out doing right because we feel good well especially for me as a food addict it's easy to switch my addiction from highly palatable rich food to the vegan junk food or even the whole food plant-based um, so I, I, I just really, I think more recently I've gotten in touch with this addiction thing and I, 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 I feel like I'm free, but if I were to have, um, like we went to a friend's house and she made a vegan cake and vegan ice cream and Tammy, you know what, when I was helping her clean up the dishes, I was eating off of other people's plates <laughs> and that's embarrassing. Right. But, you know, it just, it's so exciting and it just, and it's legal and I can fool myself into saying, well, it's vegan, but no. I, yeah. the, what, we, what we, none of us have brought up is that the wonderfulness of what your taste buds change and they get, normally they're overwhelmed by salt and oil and sugar. And once you eliminate those from your diet, you now can taste really subtle flavors. I mean, we're being like carnivores now. We're, we're talking about negative things, the positive things. And, and this is, it's taken Dottie a while to figure this out. She makes a, and I, I always push this, my leek pie. Oh no, don't talk about that again. <laughs> I'm sure. And it is. It's too much work. See, that's what Dottie says. She yeah, makes it's too, it, it's too much work. But there are people out there that want it. It's, um, I get all these responses from people that ask for the recipe. And then I send it and they feed. They, I made it and it's multi flavorful, they call it. And it is. And you can taste all the different flavors in it. I know yeah. it's a lot of work. It's but you're not work. a cook. It's, no, I can have an orgasm over a sweet potato. <laughs> I mean, I don't want your meat pie, Al. I don't want it. That's all right. There are people that do. And That's you write right. me and I will send you the recipe. It is just flavorful. It is just wonderful. And I have to tell you, five years ago, I wouldn't have appreciated it. Oh, it tastes like stupid. It tastes yeah. stupid. So yep. the, the flavors change. There are benefits aside from the health. There are benefits to our flavor buds. Yes. yes. Oh, All I right. know. Like even oh, yeah. carrot once so we good. neuro once we neuro adapt, then we can appreciate whole natural foods and we don't have to have all of those foods that have been altered to, you know, 
give us a big dopamine surge. Mm -hmm. So that's also a wonderful benefit. What about what, since we're talking food, what about cravings? Do you all ever get any cravings for anything that you used to eat? Yes. Oh, I have cravings. Oh, you do. I, again, it's the, not the, in the genes, it's in the recipes. My dad always had to have meat at every meal and he had to have a dessert. And well, of course, I brought that forward in my life. And so I always had to have a dessert. I had to have something sweet at the end of the meal. And sugar was the hardest thing for me to give up. So now after a meal, I will have some grapes, a banana, some sort of fruit. I have to, I still do. I have to have something sweet. Um, there is, uh, Dr. Greger has little... Um, not chocolate balls, but uh, peanut butter. Uh, no, uh, dates and um, oatmeal and a little bit of um, uh, cocoa in it. And I use defatted cocoa. I'm really strict on fat. I don't eat any fat. Yeah. And that's why I don't have any trouble losing weight. I have, I have to eat four meals a day to keep my weight over 140. Mm. And I'm 5'11. Yeah. So I have a you, Esther. Pardon? I was saying, what about Esther? Do you ever have cravings? I have, I have memories of food, mm-hmm. you know, but I am so, it's like a divorce. I am so done, <laughs> so done with it. I, you know, I can remember it. I can remember making cheesecake. I remember the carrot cake. I can remember going to the nut tree and having all these different toppings and ice cream. But then I also remember what a slave I was to it. And yeah. so I, no, I don't want anything. I don't eat dessert. I, I have two fruits a day because on the maximum weight loss program, you can have up to two fruits a day. Sometimes I'll have a little bit more, but I try pretty much to stay on that program because that's what led me to success. And, um, uh, you know, and now that I've been at goal weight for over two years and maintained that weight loss, I'm so happy. And I've learned from following you and Chef AJ and the, calorie density chart. I don't want anything past that green line or that red line, whatever color it is, because as long as I stay with fruits and vegetables, grains and beans, I will never, never gain my weight back. Right. And that is salvation. I mean, that is freedom. That is peace of mind to me to know that I have found the answer. And excuse me, but it is utopia. It is the fountain of youth. It is everything I've ever wanted in my life. And I just love it. And I, it's my safety zone. And I think on the other side of that line is tempting. And so when I do eat something on the other side of that line, I measure it and weigh it. And I put an asterisk by it in my food journal on Esther's Nutritional Journey. So people know that they can try that when they have attained their goal and maybe for up to six months. So you're really stable before you experiment at all. And like Dr. Lyle says, um, he says, we may never be able to go back to eating the way we used to eat when we gained that weight. So I do experiment a little bit with nuts. Um, Once, oh, rare, rare do I eat pasta. I just, it's not that big a deal for me. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, Oh, I do put some flaxseed in my oatmeal now. Mm -hmm. um, To see once, maybe once, you know, if I happen to be somewhere with olives, I might have a few olives. But basically, I stay on the maximum weight loss program because that's what works for me. Yeah, well, it keeps your brain chemistry stable. Oh, yes. and, it, and that's just an amazing thing. Like, w- were you ever a yo-yo dieter? Did you? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Big so time. you know. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, I, mean, I want to point out because, you know, there are lots of diets out there. In fact, I was recently in Women's World magazine where they <clears> featured four different kinds of diets. And I was sorry that they even introduced the other three. But, you know, we all have choices. We all have ways that we learn. And although I wish the magazine were only plant-based, they did talk about the keto diet. They talked about a Didn't protein the keto diet. almost kill you? Yeah, and the keto almost killed me because <clears throat> Ben and I both were on that and I thought it was doing great. I had those little test strips and I was purple and I was doing everything really well and getting to eat pork rinds and butter and cheese and, <laughs> and the skin off of chicken from Costco's and, and all the fat on meat. I loved the fat. 
And so I realized I was not only a sugar addict, but a fat addict. But anyway, on that diet, no one ever told me ever about the correlation between a high fat diet and having gallbladder problems. And we were, you know, 2000 miles away from home and I had my last gallbladder attack and I had pancreatitis at the same time and ended up fortunately at the Cleveland Clinic where they did surgery. <clears throat> and then still, I didn't know that. So I continued on the keto or we called it Dr. Atkins diet until I landed in the hospital again with my numbers so high with pancreatitis that the doctor said to me, have you called your kids yet? Uh, I said, well, no, I just saw them last week for Thanksgiving. Well, it was interesting you know, after Thanksgiving and all that food. So yeah, I just, it's, it's, that's why I think Al and I do what we do is because there are so many of our friends that have doctors that don't support this and they put their doctor on a pedestal and they think what their doctor said is true, but the doctors don't get this education in school. So here we are little peeps down at the ground roots level yeah. telling our stories because somebody will listen, you know? And oh, absolutely. Well, I've had people say to me, if, if everything that you're telling me is true, why hasn't my doctor told me about this? Because they're ignorant. <laughs> well, they, they, just, they, don't, they, just, they don't know what they don't know because yeah. they didn't get that education in medical school. So it does take a grassroots effort. You yeah. know, it takes um, people like you going out and telling other people what you did to reverse your disease. Yeah, and I, I think this would, be, this would be a good time for me to introduce this yes. book if I haven't already. Um, this is a fabulous book. And you know, at first, um, I was so honored that Ben and I have our story uh, in this book. It's Disease Reversal Hope, Real People, Real Stories. And uh, Dan Purgis and Scott Stoll, who's a medical doctor, co-wrote this book. And like I say, my ego was flattered, yes, to be included. But after I got the book and have a chance to read about, there's about 36 other stories here. People have reversed diseases, far, far greater health hazards than I ever dreamed of having. I mean, reversing diabetes, reversing heart disease, reversing so many dysfunctions. And you can't really see it on the book very well, but there's lightly, there's um, all the diseases that it can reverse, like high blood pressure, multiple sclerosis, even lupus, even, even rheumatoid arthritis, which is hard to do without staying on the diet 100%. But this book, I've been, we've been reading one story every night as our bedtime story. And I'm thrilled to say that uh, Dr. Scott Stoll will be on Chef AJ tomorrow at two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And Chef AJ did ask me if I wanted to come on the program uh, with them. So we'll see how that evolves. But I just can't speak highly enough of it. And as I, I've been trying to cram and read two or three stories a day so we can get it completely read by tomorrow. But my heart goes out. I mean, in our family, I have my son's father-in-law has diabetes and kidney failure, and he's selling his home and moving close to a dialysis center uh -huh. to start dialysis. Mm -hmm. And so today when I wrote my word in uh, Esther's Nutritional Journey, it was alarm. People, we've got to sound the alarm. People are dying and people don't know. And how can you make a good choice if you don't have both sides, you don't have uh, if you don't have the information that it's possible? Now, if somebody chooses to stay with their lifestyle of the rich and the famous and eating at the king's table and all that, that's a choice. But how can you make a choice if you don't know the information? Yeah, it, it eventually, it'll probably get to a point where um, mainstream physicians will have to tell people that there is an alternative. We're not there yet, but you know, when you have high cholesterol, they should tell you that you have a choice between taking the statin or you can make these lifestyle changes that also have good results. We're not there yet, yeah. but one day I believe that we will be there where yep. that will happen. Yeah. Esther, we have a question. Um, someone wants to know how long did it take to lose your weight and which program did you follow? Okay. Uh, I followed Dr. McDougall's <clears throat> maximum weight loss program. It is similar to most other plant-based programs. However, for those who want to lose weight faster, 
uh, people who are older than like me, and I didn't have a lot of time to mess around. The McDougal program also eliminates, in addition to animal dairy and fat, it also eliminates some healthy but high fat foods, such as avocados, nuts, seeds, soy, and olives. And so that kind of restricts a little bit more. But that's, I mean, oh, if you've already given up the meat and the dairy and the oil, I mean, these other things aren't that big of a deal to give up. And that made all the difference. And I did not choose this diet. It, the book was given to me free of charge from a friend. And I just decided I'd done every other diet out there from tops to Weight Watchers to Overeaters Anonymous to the 600 calorie diet to even a Slender Now product. I even sold it one time. I mean, I'd done every diet. And so I wrote a little sticky note on my computer and I said, in the first year, I want to lose 70 pounds. I want to improve my ability. I want to improve my eyesight. And why I thought of that, I still don't know. And I wanted uh, to, to get off of my medication. So in the first year, I lost 80 pounds instead of the 70. The second year, I lost another 25. And the third year, I lost another 25. And now for two and a half years, I have been at goal and it feels really, really good. And uh, you if look I amazing. may, Esther and I are in a support group Wednesdays uh, and it's and I gave my presentation and, uh, and Esther did too, to a couple. And 14 months ago, they saw the light. They took the pledge and they both lost in 14 months over 70 pounds each. And tell them how old they are. Uh, they're in their 80s, yeah. early 80s. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that fantastic? He did, it, he did it for heart reasons. He, he had uh, uh, surgery on his heart. He had, uh, not stints, uh, angioplasty. And uh, she was, she, neither one of them were mobile. She could hardly get out of bed. They both had scooters to drive around. Now they can hike. Yeah. And they did basically, they did Eschelstin's program, but it's the same as yeah. yours. Yeah. Basically, you and I don't have any differences. No. So. But I want to tell you, I have, a, a, I have a long time friend that I just lost on Halloween. And Ben and I had even worked for him. And he was a foodaholic like me. Um, he just, he said he knew the answer, but he just, he just loved food too much. It was wow. too big a part of his life. So he died on Halloween. And then I have another friend that I've known since I was like 12 and same age as my friend who died. And uh, so he came to Sacramento and I had a chance to talk with him. And when he went back home, he said, well, do we have to do this all at once? <laughs> you know, can we kind of kind of ease into this. He didn't dive in like I did. And, and I said, Bill, and this was in October. I said, Bill, we're both going to be 78 this month. We don't have time to wait. <laughs> and so he and his wife have embraced this and he's lost 40 pounds already. Oh. And his wife had a foot injury, so she hasn't been able to move too much. So her process is slower. But women don't compete with your men. You will lose every time or they will lose and you won't win, whatever. Right. Because uh, men just burn it up differently. And so don't compete with anybody. And so even when I tell you what my weight loss was and how long it took, don't set that as a standard. Set health as your standard. Because yeah. you want to be happy. You want to have peace of mind. And when you find the answer, finally, there's nothing better than that peace of mind. Amen. Oh, I mean, the war is over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Sarah has a question. Um, she wants to know, were you able to convert your children to eating this way? No, no. I have one, uh, my daughter-in-law has gone to Forks Over Knives and she put their culinary cooking thing. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And she's gone uh, vegan. My son um, still likes cheese once in a while and ice cream a little bit once in a while, but she does cook vegan for him and for that I'm very thankful I mean there's nothing better than having a daughter-in-law care about your son yeah you know? that's great that's wonderful and I do have a granddaughter who's gone vegan um but it's a hard it's a hard sell and you know without a crisis or without right you know it sometimes does take a crisis I don't know how Ben was smart because yes. he didn't have a crisis but he I think what made sense to him is he started realizing that it's better for the environment 
and it's better for the animals and it was better for his health too but it wasn't like he thought it through rather a, than emotionally he had a good role model too yes and well and he won't admit this but some, i remember some people used to say you better watch out she's looking pretty good <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. that was he wanted to admit that. So cute. I remember somebody asked him one time, and maybe it was when we had you and him on our show, if he ever um, is tempted to have a donut. And he said, no. He said, I know what donuts taste like. And I just always remember that. Yes. You know? It, it used to be when we traveled, we stopped at every donut shop because he wanted to compare. Of course. Sure. You know, but he made wonderful buttermilk bars. But we have gone back to that donut shop to thank the people who bought the business from him. Mm -hmm. And they're carrying on after 25 or 30 years. And, um, you know, and then he can't believe what coffee and donuts used to sell for and what they're selling for yeah. now. Sure. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I, people ask me, I don't honestly miss anything. Yeah. It, it's the only thing, as I say, is the convenience. It's hard to, to get you just end up eating home a lot more but you enjoy your food more yeah. i didn't really enjoy a lot of the food that i ate ben would still rather eat at home than go out i've always been that yeah. way yes yeah. yeah even if we eat simply you know it's just food you like and taste and he he does different from me he he does he likes to make uh, tacos or burritos at night with um with uh, healthy tortillas and he puts avocado in there with some salsa and some lettuce and onions and mushrooms, whatever he does, I don't eat it, but he, he'll eat that every night, you yeah. know? And then I'll take my dad's cooking and, and make stuff with that that suits his liking, you know? But anyway. We have another question for you. Janice wants to know, do you guys take any supplements? Yes. I take vitamin B12. Yes, you have to. Yes. And uh, I think I take, I don't remember what they are, but they're part of the, they're not really supplements, but I take things like um, ginger mm -hmm. and turmeric and things like that. They're, they, Spice. they're spices, you know, and I want to make sure I get them so I'll take them. They're big pills, but I can take big pills. I'm a big yeah. boy. Sometimes I put turmeric on my oatmeal mm -hmm. just for fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I drink some beet juice that has turmeric in it, oh. which I thought was interesting. Yeah, my local Rayleigh's went healthy, they think. I, I have an argument with them that ivory tea still has a whole lot of fat in it. But anyway, mm -hmm. they give me some options. Al, well, I want to say it's a miracle that Kaiser even suggested those three books for you. Yeah, well, I Kaiser... Have... Uh, Kaiser has said we want to go whole food plant based, but the doctors haven't got that message yet. It yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah, this this other friend of mine who's my age, he has all kinds. He's had um, colon cancer. He's had uh, heart open heart surgery, and now he has veins in his legs that aren't good, and he's had to have you know them transplanted from one leg to another. And I had a really sad conversation with him about a week ago, and I said. What you know? What is your resistance to trying this for 21 days? Yeah. And he said to me, "I don't have a want." Yeah. He said, "I had a want when it came to quitting smoking, but I don't have a want for this." Oh. I said, "Okay, you've made it clear." This is right. just as important to your health as smoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. But, oh well. You know, we it's hard, it's hard to accept, but we have to remember that our journey is our journey. Yeah. And yep. Our journey is their journey. It's easier to help the people who come to us that are interested and yeah. asking for help than it is to go cold to people and offer it. Yeah, yeah I've learned that you cannot care more about someone's health than they do. Yeah. And and if I get discouraged, I mean, it's been so cute. He'll say to me, why do you keep beating a dead horse? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you have 12,000 people in your journey. Go talk to them. Oh, no, no, no. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But it is difficult when we have family and friends who we know could be helped and their health could be drastically improved. 
if they would do what we have done. And when they choose not to, it's so disappointing because we know what a difference it could make in their life. Well, it, when you you people, I mean, I, I don't mean to make a dichotomy here, but the, the BF Goodrich people of the world, and there's a lot more of you, obvious. But when you have heart disease, you 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 know you're right on the edge. You know that, that you're not. You don't have long. I knew I didn't have long to live, and so. It, it was the way my body, the things that I could do were so dramatic. I, gave, I bought 10 copies of all the books, the, the three books, and I gave them to people and they just gathered up. Now I'm very careful who I give them to. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I think timing is important. And, yes. And I think it's also really important to respect our friends who don't choose this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's harder when you feel like you have an answer, but most of all, and I stress this over and over again, the most important thing is love. Yeah. And we have to love everybody right where they are, knowing that they're on their own path and they're, they're doing life as they know it. And if they ask questions, we're here to help. But, you know, we're all learning. Six years ago, I didn't know anything. Yeah. Right. And all we can do is be a good example. Yeah. We can show them, you know, what we've done and be a good example. And then when they see the changes that we've made or the success that we've had and, you know, being able to lose the weight and keep it off and reverse a lot of our um, uh, lifestyle related diseases that we've had, if they want to know more, they know that we, they can ask and we can yeah. help them. Yeah. But some, so many don't. Um, we had someone locally asking if you have any recommendations for vegan plant-based restaurants in the Orangeville or Citrus Heights area where you can get SOS free food. I mean, they didn't say SOS free, but that's what we promote. So I'm going to say SOS free. Um, There's food. only about six in all of Sacramento area, but if you will send me an email, I would go to my website. I will be happy to answer that question. Yeah. Basically, we go to the vegan plate on Wednesdays in Roseville. Mm -hmm. We've been to El Papagayo and Carmichael. We've so been... since that, can I ask you, since that changed hands? Yes. Can yes. you get oil free? Yes. yes. Okay. I won't go to any place unless it's oil free, unless I can get oil free right. food. And then we've been going to uh, Whole Vegan and Wholesome. And it's in um, Rockland. And yeah. Rockland. Same restaurant. Same yeah. What about um, Faux Fresh? Faux Fresh, yes, that's my And the, But that's in Rancho, isn't it? Yes, that's in Rancho. And, and next Saturday, we're going to go to the Living Hut in Elk Grove. Mm -hmm. And can you get oil free there? It's, yes. it's rather restrictive, but yes, they do have steamed vegetables and brown rice. Right. And then, of course, you can go to um, Zest Kitchen yeah. in yeah. Rockland. Yeah. yeah, you can and go to any, almost any Oriental Chinese restaurant and order steamed vegetables and steamed rice. Mm -hmm. Now, that gets pretty boring and you've got to put something on it. But, you know, there's yeah. always something. Yeah. I bring, I take my own uh, salad dressing courtesy of California balsamic. And then you can almost always go get a, a salad with no dressing and yeah. make sure there's no cheese on it and there's no fat there. Yeah. And at Spaghetti Factory, you can get a side order of broccoli, but you have to tell them no, no mazis with cheese. Uh -huh. And at BJ's, which is another chain I like to go to, they do have a wonderful quinoa bowl. And the uh, manager in the Elk Grove, uh, He's a BJ. Vegan. He's vegan, and he has a menu with five items on the menu that are um, good to order. So if you look around, you can find places. Yeah. And steakhouses, you can always get a baked potato yeah. Yeah. and a side of broccoli. You know, it yeah. works. And sometimes I'll chop up a potato and put it in a container and take it with me, or some beans to add to just a yeah. plain salad. Just you know, it's like I just figure it's one meal. It's That's just right. One meal. Right. You know, it doesn't really matter. And you can, you know, eat a little something before you go or know that you can eat when you get home. So um, Carol Lee has a question for Al and she wants to know what your um, best tips are for sticking to your program. 
Your best tip, I think, is it prevents you make, from dying. So. Make the decision that once you you have to what decide what's the most important thing in your life. What is it? Is it uh, eating? Is it your family? Is it your health? I mean, breath, it, breathing is a good one. Yeah. So my my most important thing in my life is my health. So every decision that follows from that is isn't really a decision. It's just in the oh, okay. I, it isn't healthy if I lay down in the middle of the freeway. So I'm not going to do that. It isn't healthy if I throw my if I spend a lot of time jumping out of airplanes without parachutes. That's not healthy. So you don't do that. So you just it just follows. Um, and you it you have to have the commitment and you have to prioritize everything. What is healthy and then set up systems. For instance, even though I don't take very many, I do take pills, and I don't like to forget them. So in the morning. I will uh, take my pills and brush my teeth and all. And I, like you, I have to take uh, thyroid pills, but you don't want to take it 20 minutes and there are another one. So if I leave the pills on the countertop upstairs, I'll forget to take them. So I put them on a counter on the way downstairs. And so I can't forget, I can't pass, I can't go downstairs without seeing the pills. So I said, oh yeah, then I'll take them. And so I set up things like that in, in, in health and everything I try to do. Otherwise, I'd, I don't know where I'd be in my yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that old saying, fail to plan, plan to fail. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you, one thing that you two do and that I also do is that we plan ahead so that we, you know, we grocery shop, we prep food and we make sure that we always have healthy food that we can eat. And so it's, creating an environment that supports your lifestyle, as well as the people that you hang out with, like you guys hang out with like minded people, because that helps you stay in a mindset of eating the way that you eat, you exercise on a regular basis. That's, an, you know, it's a series of healthy habits that you've put into place you know, just like putting your pills where you'll walk by them every morning. You know, it's a, we have to be intentional about this. This doesn't just yes. magically happen. You don't read the book and then it all falls into place. You ha have to take action and put things in place to make it easier for yourself. And I bet you guys would agree with me that health is your greatest wealth. Yes. Health yeah. is like money. You don't appreciate it until you don't have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. That's true, Al. That it's is number, very true. It's number one in my life. I and I don't care what it is. I do with healthy. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of the system. You set. Well, you that's, set up that's systems. part of self love too. Okay. You know where where you value who you are as a person, yes. and you don't want to do anything that's going to subtract from that peace of mind that you have found and right. that security and and then it and then you have something to share with other people too because it's work and it's working yeah and I think another thing is I think sometimes for some of us um staying out of the kitchen has really has helped me a lot sometimes I don't even go in the kitchen in the morning till 11 and Ben says I'm going to tell people you're bedridden <laughs> <laughs> But that's where I do my best work. All you right. know, I have my little phone and I'm in bed and I'm talking to people in my group and I'm writing my daily word and I'm posting pictures of what I eat every day. And so if I don't even get out of my office until 10 o'clock, I mean, that much time is time I have not felt like I had to eat. So right. some, some say, are you intermittent fasting? And I say, well, not officially. I'm not trying to do that but if i'm not in the kitchen i'm not hungry then so i you am. don't need breakfast no a lot of times i don't wow like today right. i didn't today i didn't eat we had a zoom on church today and i don't like to eat before i speak and so i it was noon before i had my potato and my sweet potato and my um, brussels sprouts and my greens and my raspberries you know and my carrot yeah you know? and so that's all i've had so far today and and then i went to the gym and i started realizing that exercise is only 20%, you know, our food is 80%. Yeah. 
Yeah. But 20% is worth looking at. Yes, it is. And so I've decided, you know, because I've been going to the gym to recruit people because I sit in a hot tub and I snag them and <laughs> I go in the sauna and I snag them because everybody there is there because they want to get well. I mean, they're right. getting fit, so that's a perfect audience. And so then I thought, well, I need to take care of myself too. So on Friday, I got on the treadmill for an hour and today I did too. So I wore the same thing to church. I wore the same thing on the treadmill. I'm wearing the same thing now. <laughs> and Al I'm, says I don't stink. Okay, good. Well, I'm so proud of you, Esther, because here's, here's the thing. We never stop improving and tweaking what we're doing, that's right. right? You never so, stop growing. That's right. So I, you know, I watch the summits that come up, the plant-based summits, because and I listen to speakers and I watch videos on YouTube because there's still room to grow. There's still room to learn. And, you know, I'm learning more about gut health and how important the greens and the grains are to feed our microbiome. I didn't know about that in 2013 when I started yeah. down this journey, you know, and so it's important, I think, to keep learning, keep yeah. reading, keep uh, but it, Also, it's important to keep balance in your life. We mm -hmm. can't I try very hard not to become one dimensional. Yeah. Yeah. I want to have other interests in my life. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes, I do. Quit <laughs> 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 <With> that. <laughs> well, I, wanna... do, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I have single digits left, mm. which that frightens me sometimes because I, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. You know, somebody asked yeah. me what my uh, bucket list was. I don't I have a huge bucket list. Yeah. yeah. Well, life is so full. It it's is. so wonderful. And if you it have is. health, you can live it. Yeah. Now, there are yeah. so many people I know that in my cohort, my age group, that they're just, they don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, well, yeah. And I think it's important to have things to look forward to oh, as yeah. well. You know, like we're going on the Alaska cruise, yes. the, the vegan Alaska cruise. And, you know, we're going to have a great time. Yeah. together because there's a group of us from the Sacramento area that are going and so oh, you know great. that it's so fun and and so exciting that we get to travel together yeah. as well so I want to tell we've been on for an hour and 23 minutes oh my wow. <laughs> I know it goes by fast though doesn't it oh, when you're talking nice. with friends <laughs> so I want to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you so for Esther Esther has a wonderful Facebook page that um, you can join. It's Esther's Nutritional Journey. See the sign up there behind. And uh, we also have it, Tom's whispering to me that it's also in the description of the um, show. So underneath the YouTube video, there's a down arrow or depending on what device you're watching this on, that a down arrow to click on, or it might say, see more and you click on that, and then the links, there's active links in there. And so you can go to Esther's Nutritional Journey, you can order her um, book. And then for Al, Al has his staying alive, wholefoodplantbased.com website. He said, you, if you have questions, you can email him, he'll answer your questions. And if you post questions on Esther's Facebook page, she will answer your questions on there. And she has files on there of rest, her recipes and her instant pot cheat sheet. And oh, yeah. um, she posts oh, her yeah. daily food. Yes, I Esther. I want to say, Tommy, I, I mean, if someone does want to join the group, I have two questions to answer. And Sometimes people, in fact, I have quite a few people who want to come on my group, but they haven't answered the question. So then that means I have to write to them individually and say, and if you still want to join, please go back and answer the question. And so, she's strict. Yes. Even my cousin wanted to join. She didn't answer the question, so she's not in yet. But I have to <laughs> you know. I love that, Esther. Hey, uh, rules are rules. Well, That's right. Well, the point is, if you don't know what you want, how can I help you? Yeah. Or if you, if you can't claim for yourself what your goals are or what's important to you, what's the point? Yeah. And then I just want to know if you've seen some of the documentaries so I know how far along you are in being indoctrinated. How much work <laughs> do I have left to do? You know, 
Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, I think that's perfect that you do that. And Al, I want you to send me the leek pie recipe. <laughs> okay. You don't have to answer two questions. I'll be happy to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And some weekend when I have some extra time to make something fancy, I'll make it's a, that. It's a lot of cutting and dicing. Yes. Yes. So um, somebody asked when the vegan cruise is, and that will be in August um of this year and no waiting list. yeah there is a waiting list um yeah. and i think you have a note about it in the the email that you sent out today so yeah. if you're on our mailing list um tom sent out an email and there's one in galapagos also island next year are you going on that one i am nice i am I just, you know, it's whole, whole food, plant-based, no salt, no sugar, no oil. They can go around the harbor for all I care. <laughs> well, I have to say, Ben and I have a cruise. We had three canceled this, this year so far, but we do have one on the books in December. And that's one reason why we aren't going to be joining you. We're going to South America. And oh. we, know, we know how to work the system. So we'll just do our own thing on the show. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, we'll miss you on the Alaska one, but I know you're going to have a great time. Well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here today and sharing your inspiring stories. It's been fantastic. You guys are great speakers and be sure to catch Esther tomorrow on Chef AJ's program. Are you at 11 or two? Two, two o'clock. At two o'clock in the afternoon. That's 2 p.m. Pacific time. So be sure to check that out and watch her then. And let me know if you guys want to come back. This is so much fun. Oh, sure. Oh, anytime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're a sucker for this. This is as best as we can do to see you. It's wonderful to see you. Karen. And this is the most I fun I've had all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, miss, I miss you guys. I love you so yeah. much. You guys are just amazing. And I can't wait until we can get together again. Oh, I know. But All right. Beautiful. It's just wonderful to see you, Tammy. And oh, thank, thank you so and much Tom for what he does. I, I do want to say that our mates are wonderful backup people for us. I mean, I couldn't do what I do without Ben and he could not eat and do what he could. Oh, have, absolutely. You know, and so even though they are as loud mouthed as we are, <laughs> you know, their their contribution is wonderful. It absolutely is. And they're both amazing cooks. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing cook. So it, it's teamwork all, all around. That's for sure. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. We'll thank talk you. to you soon. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate you being here. Um, if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe so that you'll get notifications when we do another live. And if you go over to the blog at nutmegnotebook.com, and subscribe there, you'll get on our email list. And on Sundays, Tom sends out a reminder, letting you know who's going to be on the show and what's happening in the plant-based community. So, and a, a really good letter went out today. So hopefully you got that as well. So are you going to come on and say goodbye with me, Tom? Yeah, for just a moment. Um, <laughs> okay. I think, yeah, I'm on. Um, we will um, see you next week. We haven't published the topic for next week yet, but but if you're not signed up at nutmegnotebook.com, uh, do so, and then you will get the announcement for that. Sounds good. I'm so, Tammy. And I'm oh, Tom. let's thank our moderators. Yes, they were busy today. <laughs> there were some bots. There were some bot trolls, and so, so they had good hunting. Okay. Jesse, Jess, or, um, Randy wants to know if she gets a raise for hunt, being such a good troll hunter. Okay. 10% increase on your current pay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Randy, <laughs> Tiffany, and Jesse for moderating. For us, we really appreciate all the hard work that you ladies put in for us. And we will see everybody next week. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy, healthy one meal, meal at, at a time. time. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Nice. They might come back on. Give them the oh, sometimes they do. People will come, come back on. on. Okay. They hear much more. No, no, no sometimes they do. They'll come back and they'll say, you know, huh? yeah. <laughs> see?